everyone, thank you so much for watching today. Today is going to be another video for my beginner on a budget series and this is how to find your right shade of foundation. I think this video is great for this series because a lot of you guys are not sure on how to choose your right foundation and you end up wasting a lot of money just buying different ones. So I'm going to share with you guys my tips that I know on how to pick your right undertone, your right shade, and also find the right finish of foundation. So I have some notes here I might be referring to on my phone so that's why I'm looking down some. So the first thing you want to do is find your undertone. You probably have heard people on YouTube talking about this and this is basically whether if you're cool, warm, or if you're neutral. Me personally I am neutral so you can't tell if I'm cool or warm. It's kind of falls in between. So one way that you can tell if you're cool, warm, or neutral is looking at the veins on your wrist. If your veins look more blue then that means you're a cool tone. Um, if you're cool you also have more of a pink undertone. And if you're cool you want to look for shades like creamy natural and if you hold them up against other shades you can tell they have more pink in them than yellow. So it's really the opposite of the yellow and it's not the neutral either. If you have more of a warm skin tone, it's going to have more yellow bases. This is usually um, people who have darker skin tones, more of, they say, olive skin tones. So you don't have to have really dark skin to have a yellow undertone. Um, a lot of people have the yellow undertone as well. But you can tell that by looking at your veins and seeing if your veins look more green. That means that your skin has more of a yellow tone, so they're showing up green when you look at them. And if you have a warm undertone, you want to look for foundation shades that have names like Warm and Honey. I know L'Oreal True Match is great at finding shades in their color range. They have them labeled as warm, cool, and neutral. And they have like a W, I think, for warm in their color name. So that's a great way to look at it is depending on which brand of foundation. Um, they all name them a little bit differently, but also similar at the same time. Um, and then if you're neutral, that's in between and you can't determine the color of your veins. That's personally me. When I look at my veins, they look a little bit bluish, but then they also look a little bit greenish. It's kind of in between like a blue-green. So that means that I'm neither warm or cool toned. And these, you want to look for names like beige, natural, and ivory. Um, those are the names of the foundation colors that are going to be more for neutral shades. This is what most people are and what the majority of foundations are are more neutral. I'm just going to show you guys these three CoverGirl 3-in-1 um, foundations that I have. The one in the middle is the shade that I am now. This one is very neutral. I'm pretty sure it's the lightest shade that they have. This one over here is definitely more of a, um, it's called nude beige, but to me it's definitely more of a yellow tone. You can see the difference when they're up beside each other. And then this one over here is creamy natural. It's one of the only shades that CoverGirl has that does have a pink undertone. Um, I tried these out when I was trying to figure out my tone, but definitely this one, you can see up close with the other ones that this one is more pink. This one is definitely more yellow over here on this side. So holding them up side by side, you can really see the difference in them, not just in the shade, like how dark or light, but really in just the tone because these are all around the same shade except for this one that's a little bit dark. So after you find out your undertone, you want to figure out what shade you are. So this means whether if you're really dark or really light. So that's pretty much the easiest part to do. For me, I'm like a few shades lighter than the fairest. Um, but it depends on the brand too. Like the Revlon Color Stay, the fairest shade is really white base. It's for very fair skin tones and that one is too fair for me. But for the CoverGirl foundations, I find that I have to go with the very lightest shade for the lightest. And that one to me isn't even light enough for some people who have really porcelain skin. So if you have super light skin, then CoverGirl is not going to work for you. Or at least not um, this 3-in-1 line. They might have different shades for the other brands. But usually they keep it all the same. Um, but for me, Ivory is the perfect shade right now with no self-tanner, and this one is their lightest shade. So to find your right shade in the drugstore, so if you can, it'd probably be better to go in without makeup if you want, just so you can match it up better. Then you want to pick three shades that you think are closest to your skin tone. So pick the one that you think is the closest, and then go with one that's a shade darker and one that's a shade lighter. And then you want to swatch those three on your chest. I personally like to match the foundation to my chest, not my neck. Because when you look at your neck, it has a shadow, and it's hard to tell on the light. So you really want to look at your chest, because over Overall, you want your face foundation to match with the rest of your body. You don't want to go with the color that's exact with your face because typically people's faces are a lot lighter than the rest of your body. So match it with the color of your chest. If you can, I usually, um, if they're not open, you don't want to go and open the packaging totally like if it has a sealant on it. But I just squirt out a tiny little bit on my hand in the drugstore. Um, sometimes they have testers. It's awesome if they do, but sometimes they don't. I just squirt out a little tiny bit on my finger, just enough to be able to swatch it. And you want to swatch those three shades in this order. You want to do the shade that you think is your skin tone right in the center, and then you want to do the darker one and the lighter one on either side. That way you can really see. Then you want to wait a little bit for it to dry and look at it in natural sunlight. It looks totally different outside than it does inside because of the lighting. Lighting inside of stores can be awful sometimes, and it's just very fluorescent and white looking. 
So you want to look at it in natural light. Turn towards the window or even go outside the store and just see how it looks on your chest. And make sure you have a mirror with you too if you don't. Or you can look at it in your car. That's usually what I do. For some reason when you go out in your car, you can always tell your foundation is like too light or too dark. Um, it's just the perfect lighting outside to tell. So wait for it to dry and see which one blends in with your skin tone. You could if you wanted to do it on your hand, but my hands are personally lighter than the rest of my body anyway, so that's not really an accurate thing for me. But if I don't want to do it in the store and everything, I'll just do it on my hands sometimes just to get a general idea. But that's not as accurate as your chest or your neck. You can also use your jawline. A lot of people say to do that as well, but I think the chest is probably the best. I personally think you should always go with the lighter shade, so if you're undecided between two, pick the lighter one, because with the CoverGirl foundations, I know that they get a tad darker, at least this one does when it dries. Plus, it doesn't matter as much as if your foundation is a tad bit lighter um, for your skin tone, because like I said, it is natural for your face to be a little bit lighter. It's better for your foundation to be too light for your skin than be too dark, because that just looks awful when you end up with like a mask look. So if it's a little bit too light, that's okay. You can return it to the store and get another one. But I just think it's better to go with the lighter shade if you're indecisive between two colors. So what I like to do is purchase at least two shades or two or three if you're undecided. And then I return the shades that I don't like or I keep them to use later in the year when my skin might turn a little bit darker or I self-tan. And then you can mix and match them too if you want to keep them to get your perfect shade. If you really like the foundation and you can't find the right shade, that's an awesome thing to do is mix them on your hand before you apply them to your face. But most drugstores let you return. Um, I think Target might be a little bit funny about it if it's already open. But I know like CVS and Walgreens and Rite Aid, they have great return policies. Even if you've used it, you can return it. So that's awesome. Um, just purchase the ones closest to you. Get it home and put them on. Let them dry. Look at it in natural sunlight and see which one matches the best. And then you can return the ones that don't work out for you. Another thing you can do is go to a professional makeup counter to get matched. Go in obviously with no makeup so they can do your makeup. And even if you don't plan on purchasing that high-end foundation, you can at least get an idea of your undertone. They can help explain to you and apply the makeup to your skin. That way they can tell you exactly what shade and undertone you are. And then you can um, take a sample of that foundation. And then when you get it home, you can go on Fendation.com. It's spelled like foundation but with an I instead of the O-U. And that website is great because you can put in any foundation name and color and it will give you the exact match for another brand. So say if I went to like an Estee Lauder counter that is in Belk or something and I got color matched with one of their foundations and I got one of the samples that matches me perfectly that they match for me. And then I get home and I can put in like the exact match for that Estee Lauder foundation with the CoverGirl one and it will give me the exact color. So that's an awesome tool that you can use if you know your foundation in one brand but you don't know the foundation shade in another brand. Um, but at least if you go into a counter, if you don't want to purchase anything or get samples or anything, they can at least tell you your undertone and your shade. And Sephora does this as well, and Ulta I'm sure does it with the counters that they have in Ulta, but I know Sephora is usually a great place to get um, color match for. And another thing that I really like to do is I like to use color matchers on the company's website. So when I was looking into purchasing that CoverGirl 3-in-1 foundation, I went on CoverGirl's website and I found their foundation finder or match finder. I forget what it's called, but usually most brands have like a shade finder on their website. So you can go in, you can either upload a picture of yourself or you can look at the models on there and choose which one. And they have like a skin quiz where it asks you different questions about your skin and your hair color and your eye color and everything. And then it will match you with your perfect shade and undertone of foundation from their brand. So that's really awesome. Um, a lot of companies have that. If you can't find it on their website, I just do a Google search. That's what I had to do with CoverGirl because I couldn't find the link to it on their site. I just typed in like CoverGirl Foundation Finder or CoverGirl Shade Finder and you should find it. Um, I will leave you links down below to all of the stuff that I'm talking about. The Foundation Matcher website and then also um, the different brands and stuff. L'Oreal True Match, like I said, has the highest range of colors. CoverGirl is getting a little bit better with that, but they're still a little bit limited. And then Revlon also has some really good color shades. I'm going to have more details and stuff on my blog. I'll have all of these tips and stuff listed on there if you want to um, take them with you or anything. And then also I will have listed what names of foundations usually go with what color, so what you want to look for. I'm also going to have more information on my blog on this blog post that goes with this video about choosing the right finish for your skin type. But just quickly, just know that if you have dry skin, look for something that is a little bit more dewy that's going to give your skin lots of radiance and add hydration. If you have just normal skin, like me you can really go with either one I personally like matte textures so if you're oily you want to go with something that has words like mattifying all day wear 
or like the Revlon Color Stay. That one is awesome at staying put all day. So I don't want to make this video too long. So I will have all that stuff about finding the right finish for your skin type on the blog post that goes with this video. That's going to be the first link down below. So if you want to go there for more information and swatch pictures and everything. If you want to see more videos for beginner on the budget and I haven't done them yet, be sure to leave your requests in the comments below. So anything you want me to include in this series or just any video requests in general that you want me to do. Um, I would love to hear you guys' ideas because I need to think of more video ideas for this series. The other videos that I've done for this series are the best affordable skincare from the drugstore and then also um, I did my favorite makeup brushes or my essential makeup brushes. So those videos will be linked down below as well as my most recent video on the Nuance Brain Review from CVS. So definitely check that out. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and comment below and then subscribe if you haven't already and I'll talk to you soon. Bye everyone.